हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू योर फेवरेट डिजिटल मार्केटिंग पॉडकास्ट डिजिटल मार्केटिंग ज्ञान वेर वी कीप ऑन शेयरिंग इंफॉर्मेटिव टूल्स टेक्निक्स केस स्टडीज एंड लेटेस्ट अपडेट्स इन द डिजिटल मार्केटिंग डोमेन आई एम योर होस्ट प्रिंस कुमार एंड वी हैव चैरी पावर द को फाउंडर ऑफ एन सी इंटरनेट मार्केटिंग एंड लोकल एस सी ओ कंसल्टेंट विद स्टूडियो चैरी लव एस सी ओ एंड यू नो हिज द कॉन्स्टेंट एडजस्टमेंट गूगल मैक्स कीप हिम इंटरेस्टेड एंड रिलेवेंट ही इंजॉयज कंसल्टिंग विद बिजनेस ओनर्स हु वॉन्ट द वेब टू ब्रिंग द मोर प्रॉफिट एंड कस्टमर्स एंड ही इंजॉयज टीचिंग द मेथड्स ही यूजेस टू रैंक एनी वेब पेज Hi Terry excited to have you on our show and learn the art of local SEO to improve website ranking. Well thank you I'm glad to be here. Welcome to the show. So uh Terry before starting our complete conversation I would love to know about your corporate journey so far and also the different type of clients that you generally work with. Well I have some I'm in the United States I have some national clients. uh a non-profit as well as some uh profitable companies and then locally i have a uh, a sign company a roofing company windows uh locksmith financial planner uh, a variety amazing amazing so you have a kind of good kind of clients that you generally work with and you your results have shown that you know uh, your clients are very happy with you so now coming to the yeah. topic that we have of today that is around local seo so since you have been into this seo industry for a long so what are the general challenges or you know the objectives that clients generally come to you or discuss with you the key problems for having a consultation well um as far as google search engines a lot of business owners don't realize that if they're a plumber that they know there's other plumbers around town but they don't realize the competition on Google is not the same as it is in the real world so you have to let them know that when people go on not everybody in their neighborhood goes on to Google um some of the older folks you know that they may ask their nephew or uh, grandkids to get on but they don't get on the internet a lot so you want to let them know that just because there's a lot of other plumbers around town doesn't mean there's a lot of plumbers in your town that are on the web so they can realistically rank very well on them if you know if we do the proper optimization of their websites definitely definitely uh, it's not important or it's not the thing that we should understand that if they are present locally then they will be present online only so having a presence online is something that uh, is someone you know that is required out there yeah because it can bring them you know if they're well known plumber and everybody in town knows to call you know Mary's plumbing or whatever um that's great but if they want their their plumbing business to grow even more they need to get those people that have never heard of Mary's plumbing they just know their their water heater is leaking so they've got to find somebody and you want them to find Mary's plumbing. Um and so it's just a different mindset of realizing that there even if you're a really successful business in your neighborhood that doesn't mean the people on the other side of town know who you are. Yeah, exactly, rightly said because you know there are two type of audience that generally have. The one is uh the audience know your brand. The other is when they face any problem they search on Google and then they are looking for the solution. and if your website is there to provide them solution so that is the you know the next type of database that you can create with or the next type of uh, client base that you can create with and then and then you get the opportunity to make sure next time you're the one they call because they do know your brand when we talk about seo so like uh, this is general dilemma among all the audience that they have heard a lot about seo now when we talk about local seo So you know we want to understand what is the difference or the similarity between SEO, local SEO, and then again you know a lot of buzz is uh, being around voice SEO. That voice SEO will be the next thing. 
so can you just uh, give us a glimpse or you know our differences or the similarities between these three important seo terms certainly um well part of seo is knowing your audience and so with uh just regular seo it's anybody that would be searching for you know your your specified key keywords for local seo you need to optimize things twice you need to optimize them for the area and for your business your niche your keywords and stuff like that optimizing someone for new york city plumber google sees those nobody nobody in new york types in new york plumber they just type in plumber yeah. so you've got to optimize for new york and then optimize for plumber so that when they type in plumber google will know you're it's in new york so it's slightly different a little more th- few more things added on to it but it's a smaller market so generally local seo is quicker in results and easier to dominate uh to dominate a, a search result now voice seo i think going forward as artificial intelligence gets better i think it'll end up being just the same as regular seo because google will understand um that even though you and i have different voices google can still understand when we say plumber that we're looking for a plumber so as as the uh technology gets better i think it'll be blended just into regular seo because google will know what it is you're saying it will be no difference in having typed it in definitely definitely since uh, you know google is adopting itself to the latest technology and therefore audio you know they are somewhere browsing and that will be one part of like the way we are doing a podcast so in a lot of audio conversation is going on so definitely this will be something in the future where google will be grasping the keywords that we are discussing upon and based on that it might rank few of the websites or you know few of our podcast episodes you'll be able to rank a a podcast about plumbing a video about plumbing you can already see videos about plumbing um as well as a web page a, a blog uh, you know you want to be able to get Mary's plumbing in as many places as possible definitely definitely so the more the more platforms you can use and there are audio platforms um whether podcasts or like SoundCloud um and and places where people put songs i mean there's lots of audio content out there and any video you have obviously has audio content that can be separated and and also published elsewhere when we talk about local seo so definitely there will be some or the other conditions because it might be that it will be open for all or it might be that you know it will be applicable for certain type of businesses and might not suit for a few other type of business so can you help us understand if there is any requirement for businesses who want to rank in this local search well um as far as google's concerned you need to have proximation you need to be nearby so if you want to rank for a new york plumber you need to be in new york for one um you can there are service area businesses where nobody needs to know where they are because you're not going to take your your toilet to the plumber or your water heater to the plumber they're coming to you so you probably want on your page a map showing this is where we'll go this is how far we'll go out to fix your problem if you have a brick and mortar store where they're going to bring something to you where you fix you repair uh dvd players or something where they're going to bring it to you then you want a map showing this is where we are from wherever you are here's how to get to us so um you probably for local you probably want a map on your on your site the type of map will depend on your place but it it should be a google map if you want to rank on google google likes seeing that you're using some of their uh some of their technology so also are there any business types that uh, you would recommend that uh, you know uh, that they will get more benefit in local such as compared to let's say there can be an option where b2b business might not get uh, more result compared to b2c so is there any uh, 
kind of uh, thought process that you have put upon? Yeah, the um, generally speaking, the business to consumer is going to be favored. But there are a lot of businesses that are franchises and they can benefit from the name brand okay. so that uh, one local to you, Google will show it to you, knowing the brand is trusted and is an authority and there happens to be one around the corner from you kind of thing. So if that uh, is one of your com competition, then you've got to make yourself more authoritative than you would otherwise. You've got to show you're just as much an authority and you're closer. You're right across the street instead of around the corner or something like that. Obviously, you cannot be the closest business to everybody. So ideally, you're closer to the people that tend to need you. So if you do, if you loan money for building, you want to be in the areas where building's going on because that's where the people are looking for that, um, that sort of thing. So if you're, uh, you know, if you do auto repair, where are people driving their cars more? In the city, out on the edge of the city, you know, so you can determine uh, your service area matches where your target audience is most. Definitely, definitely. So understanding where our target audience is more, and then planning our local search so that you know it can cater to that audience so that will be you know one of the important things that we mentioned out yeah and i think when you go if you don't already have a website and you're going to build one you should pay attention to certain things and i look at those when i see a, someone coming to me and they say well i've got a website so i look at their website and i look for certain things that they have or don't have to to help them if their home page is titled home, I know they need work. They're not ranking well. Because unless they're selling a home, their home page should be called whatever it is they do. It should be called, you know, New York plumber, Mary's plumbing or something like that. Their title tag should also include their phone number. That way, if it pulls up on a phone, a mobile device, they can just tap it right there. They don't even need to go to your website. They can just call and say, my car broke down, come and help or whatever it is. So you want what, what you sell product or service where you are, you know, if you're in New York, if you're in Bangkok, it doesn't matter, but you need to tell the Google where you are and then a phone number and then your name brand because they're not searching for your name brand or they would have just called you in the first place. So you want to tell them what you do and where and how to get a hold of you right in the title tag. And then I look at things like, do they have a map on there? Do they have some frequently asked questions? Frequently asked questions. Google likes them, for one. People who are searching like them because it saves them calling you just to ask you a question that you get from everybody. And you can say yes or no. And they can look at it and go, okay, yeah, they are open on Saturday or they're... Um, open on this holiday or they're 24 hours or uh, they take checks or whatever it is. The questions you get most often as a business owner, you want to have answered on your page. So you're not answering the phone just to say, yes, we take checks. Okay, thank you. And, you know, the people that call already know those answers and, and, they're, and they're calling you. So then it eliminates a lot of your wasted time just answering yes or no questions. So it helps you, helps Google, and helps your, your client. So those are some of the things you, you, know, you need to look for or think about if you're having a site built. Now we will talk more about it and uh, we will try to understand you know, what are few of your important strategies while uh, that you generally work upon to implement on your client businesses so that they can rank better in local search. All right. Um, if, if you look anywhere on major factors for ranking, one of them is that title tag. And on a Google search, Google titles can be as long as 600 pixels. Okay, they're pixels length. So if you have a lot of W's, 
you can't get as much in 600 pixels if you have all eyes, for instance. So it's not a matter of words or characters. 600 pixels will show. But Google will read much further than 600 pixels. We've done tests, and you can put up to 200,000 words in a title, and Google reads them all. Only, six, only the first 600 pixels will show to your searcher, but Google will see all those others. So they'll not just know that you're a New York plumber. They'll know that you repair water heaters, that you repair leaks, that you take care of water damage, that you are in this zip code, that zip code, you're in, in this suburb. Any keyword for which people would search and you want them to find you should be in that title. Because it can be almost, it can be longer than you ever imagined it would be. And it helps Google when they're narrowing down pages. Because they know you're looking for a plumber. Oh, for a water heater. This one has plumber and water heater in the title. doesn't matter that anybody searching doesn't see the water heater. It's farther down. That's okay. So expand that title to, change, to have everything you can possibly fit in it. Still, those 600 pixels are important because humans see those. So you want to have what you do, where you do it, and how to contact you. But after the 600 pixels, you can have, you know, as, as much content as you like, pretty much. So that is a is an easy way to get a boost from, that'll take you, if you're on page seven, that'll get you to page two just doing that. It's a major change that um, Google now allows you to do those extended titles. Um, another thing I look at is you got to look at your competition. What are they doing? Do they have a lot of images? Do they have a lot of videos? Do they have, you know, if they have maps, you should have a map, that sort of thing. If you have images or videos, you want to have what are known as alt tags. So if somebody moves their mouse up to the image, it says this is a cat playing a piano or whatever the image is supposed to be. Those alt images is another place where you can have a thousand words. So if it's a cat playing piano and water heater repair is important, you got to figure out how to get that in there, you know, with that. But you do definitely want to have uh, alt tags. That also helps someone who is has uh, sight issues, whether they're blind or they just don't see well. They can have software on there that when they point to images that they can't quite make out, it'll read aloud to them, that's a cat playing a piano or whatever it happens to be. And those alt images will help with that. And Google sees them. So, so those are some things that you can uh, make it make a quite a big, quick jump uh, within a few days by adding to that uh, title tag and adding to your alt images. So what we have seen is many businesses uh, either there are two general options or you know with which they play with. The first will be they will be using just their brand name and then creating the business history. There are many businesses which we have seen that you know along with their brand name they utilize that space to have that best hospital or let's say you know uh, best uh, restaurant in this place. So they go with this. So would you recommend that you know it is, it is a good practice? And if not, then what would be the ideal practice that you would recommend? Um, it's not a practice that Google likes, but I don't know of anybody that's ever been penalized because Google found them doing it. They get penalized when some one of their competitors, their other restaurant up the street, lets Google know, hey, they're cheating. Their name of their restaurant is this, but they've added in, you know, all these other things. Um, and then Google can penalize you. But first, they will contact you and say, your, you know, your listing needs to be ch edited, okay. and you'll get a chance to edit it. But um, if you want to rank higher in the maps, you want to add those extra words. But you have to realize there's a risk, because if one of your competitors complains, you're going to have to back that off or lose the listing. So it's a risk thing. Um, it's not it's not illegal or anything like that. It's just not a best practice in Google's mind, even though they reward it. 
They give you more listings if you have more stuff on your title and then tell you, you shouldn't do that, but we're going to promote you more. So they're, they're like talking, you know, uh, out of both sides of their mouth, as they say. They're telling you not to do this, but if you do it, they help you out. So um, your best part, your best idea is to, if you haven't yet built that, to think about the name of your business. Maybe your business should be Mary's New York Plumbing instead of just Mary's Plumbing. So you can, if it ever comes up and somebody complains, you can say to Google, look, that's the name of my business. It's Mary's Plumbing in New York City. That's my name, you know, or whatever. So you can, those other words you would be adding, if you can make them a part of your business name, then you never have to worry about it. People can complain all they want, and Google will just say, well, "That's the name of their business." So you know, um, so there's you know, there's a big advantage to that if you haven't already created it with a business name. If you're going to create a new Google business profile now, they call them, but um, yeah, create them with that extended uh, information in it, and Google will reward you. What is the best strategy that you would recommend? Because uh, is it based on the ratings? with their audience or with their customer provide or are there any other parameters by which any new business if they want to rank better in google map so is there any uh, better strategy or it is just the user's rating that they have to get into um well they do want to you know foster reviews by asking clients could you give us a review but proximity matters So they want to be as close as possible to the area they serve. Also, when on your business, uh, on your map listing, you can have a place where you can put your website. Your website should mention that that area that you're trying to rank in. Because Google looks at your regular website. Whatever website you refer to, they look at it to see if it agrees with what you're putting in your maps listing. So you want that. And you want to put on those maps listing as much information as you can. Google likes to see more information and potential customers like to see more information. So you can list products if you sell products, services if you sell services. And generally, if you sell services or products, you can list them as both. If you fix water heaters, that's a service. But the product you sell could be water heater repair. So... You know, you can consider them either a product or service. So you, that way you get to list them twice. Got it, got it. And, and photos you put up should ideally be, nowadays, you take them with a mobile device. So they're geotagged in that area. So the search engine can say, oh, they really are in New York City. And took a picture of the, you know, Mary's Plumbing Company or whatever. So lots of photos. You want to have, ideally, you want more photos than your competition and lots of good content. If you if you want to put videos on, but you don't really, you're not into making videos, just take 10 photos and make a video out of them. This slideshow. It's still a video. Google likes to see photos and videos. So use both of those. Give them as much information as you can. They prefer the more you can fill it out, the better. And it helps people because some people are searching for something in particular. Oh, there's a picture. Oh, they do that. Cool. So, you know, be as in, as informative as you can. Definitely. So having a lot of information so that it becomes very easy for the customer to understand our business will be one of the key reasons that uh, you have highlighted. And when you get a review, sp- respond to the review. Say, thank you. Uh, we, we appreciate your nice review. And we love our customers as much as we love doing water heater repair in New York City or whatever. You can put keywords in there. If they, if you get a bad review, you still respond. You know, we're sorry that happened. We'll, we'll, we'll work to make it right. You know, exactly. something yeah. like that. But respond either way. It's important that the, the p- new people looking see that nobody expects you to be perfect or have pleased everybody. There's always going to be a grump, somebody that was not happy with your service. So that's normal. But how you respond to that makes a difference to the next person of whether they think, you know, if you just call them names and tell them they're a jerk, maybe I don't want to do business with you. Because if I complain, you're going to call me a jerk. Whereas if I complain, you're going to say, 
I'm sorry, uh, we, we were training somebody new, but we're going to fix it. And then, okay, then I'm still happy with dealing with you. So Now for any business, uh, ranking on the local searches is a kind of, you know, one of the important tasks and which is, I would say, it's kind of one of the difficult tasks that we generally work. Once they have worked a lot and then they have ranked among the top 10 uh, sites in Google, what should be their strategy to maintain them? Because for any business, even their competitors are doing this SEO. So maintaining that ranking is also one of the important parts. So how you would uh, you know, advise the businesses to work upon this? Um, a couple of different things they can do that are pretty easy, really. One is if you have employees, tell them once a week when they get up in the morning to pull up your business and set driving directions when they come to work in the morning. Not every day, just once a week. And in exchange, maybe they get, you know, some some kind of bonus or some benefit from it. That if once a week they do driving directions to your business, that will help. That'll help in the maps especially. Another is I set up what's known as a Google alert. Um, and you can go into Google, look up Google alerts, and you can say when anybody posts anything on the web about New York plumbing, I want to know about it. And they'll send you emails. Or you can say, I don't want to know every time, just once a week I want to know what was done. Then you can see those. You can go to those pages where somebody put something up about New York plumbing. At the bottom, you can leave a comment. includes a link back to your Mary's New York plumbing saying, yeah, we try to do the same thing and we've had a lot of luck with that new water heater style or whatever it is the article's about. Um, it also gives you a chance to see what people are talking about with New York plumbing. If there is a new technique or if there is a, someone going out of business after, you know, they've been in business for 100 years, they're going out of business or it's their anniversary of being in business for 40 years where you can, you can congratulate them even if they're a competitor. Hey, good job. We, we've only been in business for 27 years, but our customers are happy and we hope to make it to 50 years. Things like that. Because in those comments, you can leave a link to your own business. So that way you're building backlinks even while you're engaging in conversations having to do with whatever your niche is. So you're, you're seen as being informed, well-informed. Uh, and every once in a while, you may see something you go, oh, I need to start telling my clients about that. You know, um, and and so just having that alert keeps you up to date uh, with things going on also. Can you just also highlight or, you know, if you can mention about any of your clients for whom you have done as a local SEO. So you can start with what were the problems that they were facing before coming to you. And then some of the key strategies that you implemented. And at the end, what are the results that they are, you know, enjoying with? Certainly, certainly. Um, about three years ago, so this was before the pandemic, but a client hired me a financial planner, retirement planning. And if you looked in the maps where it would show three listings and then you click show more, it'll show a list of 20 and then you can click for more. Well, he was in position 37. So Pretty much nobody would ever find them in those maps. So what we did was we, uh, his map listing, we added more content, photos. Um, he was just starting a blog at the time. So we would have comments from his blogs put in his map listing. We sent, he sent uh, at our suggestion, an email to all his former clients with a link to the Google map where they could leave a review. Um, and he, so he got a bunch of reviews. We added a bunch of photos and videos in there, as well as new content from his blogs. And then I went and checked. He had some local citations from uh, local data aggregate. We got, we got more of those, as well as some citations from things like lists of uh, businesses in the area, you know, like Chamber of Commerce and stuff like that, where we got him listings that would show that he was in 
that town, Green, Greensboro, North Carolina, that he was in, in that town, as well as a few um, places that represent the financial industry, uh, some citations there. So we had some things to help show that he was in, in retirement planning and some things to show that he was in Greensboro, North Carolina, as well as adding all that content to his, uh, to his Google uh, Maps listing. Seven or eight weeks, he was at number four. Unfortunately, four is not a lot better than 37 because still nobody sees you unless they click on see more. So uh, then we started doing some link building, link building to his posts, link building to his photos and to the reviews in there. And within another few, couple of weeks, he was at two. He's now at one, but I mean, uh, so uh, he's been happy. And the fact that he stays in that maps, he keeps paying me. And we keep doing link building. Uh, I set up Google alerts for all my clients because I can go in and um, I can respond to their reviews when they're generic. If they ask something technical, then I send them to them and say, "This review, I don't know. I don't know that you know the technology or terminology to respond correctly. Could you respond to this?" But if they're fairly generic, I respond. You know, thank you for your review. We loved taking care of you, you know, that sort of thing. So I do those Google alerts for my clients so I can let them know, hey, there's going to be a, you know, a convention in the next town over on financial planning. We should leave a comment saying that, you know, um, if you can't make it to way over there, we're right here for you, you know, or whatever, stuff like that. So um, continuing to build those uh, links and periodically I will email them and say, can we get some photos, you know, some more photos of uh, the office or he's got a dog and his pet comes to work with him. So, um, and people like seeing pictures of his dog on his little mat under the desk, you know, and stuff like that. So update pictures, update from his blog, things like that to keep it up there. This was an amazing case study that you guys shared with us and definitely a place from where you know kind of they were ranking on 30 plus and then from there to bring to top two is something that is completely recommended so definitely having and even you know if uh, the one that you mentioned that having a fourth rank also in the local search is kind of uh, ranking on 30 because there will be very less chances of people clicking on more and then going to that so having that Position in the top three is something that is very important for any of you. Right, and and a lot of people, people that aren't into the web and online stuff, they believe when they pull up a, a search, they believe those three are the three Google is recommending. They don't realize these businesses have worked to get there themselves. Google doesn't pick out and say, here's the best lawyer, here's the second best, here's the third best. But a lot of people think that's what what they are. So that's why they don't click for more. The best ones are listed in in their minds. We know that it's not necessarily the best ones. It could be a, a bad, you know, scammer up there for number one. I mean, we know it's not necessarily means best. But for the people that are searching for a lot of them, that's what they consider the top three. So you want to be in there. You have already given a lot of advices, but uh, just a last piece of advice that you would like to give to the marketers who you know who are struggling a lot of to get their client's website into the Google local searches. Yeah, um, I'd suggest look at your competition and because um, H1s, the biggest writing on your website when somebody gets to that are so important and title tags are so important, I'd look at your competition and copy down their titles and their H1 tags and see if there's a way you can work that information into your titles or H1 tags so that because if if they're ranking above you, they're doing something either something you're not or they're doing something better that that you're both doing. So look for those comp- competitors that are doing well and you know do analyze them a little bit and and see if there's a way you can fit some of that in because it'll it'll help because then 
whatever you're already doing to be close, you add that in there, then now you're doing more than they were. So, you know, that, that can make a big difference. It's important to check out your competitors and to check out other keywords, variations on your keywords, not just plumber, but plumbing um, and so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah, those are important to check, check the competition and check what they're doing, because if they're ranking better than you, they've got something going on a little better than you. Maybe it's just they have more backlinks. They've been around for 10 years more then it's just that's just an uphill battle you're gonna have to it's just like running a marathon and the other guy's got a, a 10 mile head start in your first five miles you've got no chance of catching him because he's 10 miles ahead of you and he's still moving so you've just got to run faster do more eventually you can catch up to him and eventually pass him but it's not going to be a quick thing if they're far enough ahead of you. if they're that far ahead of you that you don't see him yet and you won't only run three miles because he was 10 miles ahead of you, even if you caught up a little and he's only nine, he's still nine miles ahead of you. So, you know, realize sometimes it's going to take a while. Definitely. You are rightly said that computer analysis is something that we should plan with. Because computer analysis also help us understand that, you know, from a business point of view, we might be thinking that, okay, if someone is looking for uh, something related to product, then they might be looking for plumber related keyword. But then, there might be many synonyms of uh, plumber that a user can search for. So if you know if you are getting to understand our computers, we might get few of the keywords related to that. So that that can also be implemented on our website and uh, you know into uh, incorporated into our local search strategy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, with this, we have come to the end of this amazing episode. It was one of the most informative discussion and I hope my audience have also had many takeaways from today. Well, thank you for saying so. I, I appreciate it and I'm glad to have been here. Thank you. Thank you, Terry, for sharing your all this valuable practical tips and experiences with us. And definitely this will help a lot to understand local searches better. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thanks for having me.